So, if you want to get a distinction in any course, the first thing that you're going to need, I mean, people can talk about strategies, people can talk about studying smart, etc. But the most important ingredient, the most important recipe, Okay, <clears throat> welcome back to another video. Um, so guys, um, I wanted to say philo math, philo math. Um, so I've been asking, you know, um, I think in the previous video that I did, I can't remember which video was it. I was asking like for a name that we can have for people who follow this channel. Like I even gave an example to say, people who follow Nick G's channel are called Chillers. So can't we have a name for ourselves as well? I just thought that will be cool. And there were some suggestions and I actually like this word. I didn't know about it. I know there is a word called the polymath, which is actually people who are very interested in many things. Like you'd find someone who's doing, I know there is a, um, there is a guy I know, his name is Kaelo. Um, I'm going to bring him to the, sh to the channel as well. That guy, he, he, he came from media. He, did ma he, was, he was in media. And then after that, he then went into data science. And, and he still make it, made it work, etc. So polymath, he's a polymath. Polymath are people who are very interested in many things. And I think I am a polymath. Am I interested in many things? I think I am. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is someone suggested the word philomath. Philomath. And I didn't know that I didn't know that, that the the term. So what it means is that a philomath is someone who likes to learn and study. And I think it describes sort of the channel in a way. So I think that can be the word that we can use. But in like a spice in your man. You should like a spice, you know. <laughs> We need to put some spice on it, you know. Saying philomath is too formal. Like, um, yeah, let's add some spice to it. But so in today's video, and before we get into today, to, to today's video, if you enjoy what we're doing on the channel, please subscribe. The subscription will help grow the channel and will help to make the channel to to grow. <laughs> It will help the channel to grow. Today, I want to talk about the concept of, not the concept of, but um, I had a student who actually asked me this question. Um, he walked into my office and he asked me, I was like, Ben? Oh, he said, sir. I mean, they like saying that, but I don't like that word. He was like, sir, I want to get a distinction in mathematics. How can I go about it? And then we said, and we had a discussion on this. So I thought that maybe is a discussion that I can also share here because I believe that maybe many of you might be doing mathematics and might be wanting to do well in mathematics. So how do I get a distinction in mathematics? And I'm talking about mathematics here in university because mathematics in high school is a different story. Um, but I'm interested in now in mathematics in university. So... If you want to get a distinction in any course, the first thing that you're going to need, I mean, people can talk about strategies, people can talk about studying smart, etc. But the most important ingredient, the most important recipe is passion. You will never get a distinction in a course when you don't have passion for that course. In fact, You'll never do well in anything that you're not passionate about, even in life in general. Look at your life. The things that you're doing, if you make an audit on your life, you'd realize that actually the things that you're actually excelling on are actually things that you're very passionate about. And more in most cases, these are things that you are talented in. Maybe you are, you know, there are some students who are just talented in mathematics. They're just gifted. Like, and that's what we sometimes call smartness, like someone is smart and stuff like that. But there's some students who are just talented in it. You know, they're just gifted. By that, I mean that 
they, they, their way of thinking around mathematics is just, is wow. They are very creative with it. They, they make sense of it quickly. You know, it, it's just the gift. They just have it. You know, they're just smart. There was a kid who I think, um, I don't know what happened to the kid actually, but he, he was, he had this ability of actually, you can give him any number. He can add and subtract any bigger number. Th- that's a gift. That's a gift. So, but besides the gift and the talent, I would say that for you to actually do well in mathematics, you need to have passion for it. So if you don't have passion for it, please start making or hacking into that. You know, I mean, even if you look at high school, the subjects that you probably did well in were actually subjects that you were very passionate about. And sometimes passion is something that can be induced or it can be evoked. For example, if you have... Um, a lecturer that you like, you end up being passionate about that course. You know, by like, I mean that you like their way of teaching, you like their approach, you just like how they do things. You end up getting passionate about that. So there are a few ways in which you can induce passion. Maybe one of it is, is that find a lecturer or find someone who, you know, you actually look up to who is actually doing that thing and that's one way to do that. But you need to be passionate about it. Because passion is the fuel that you're going to need when things get hard. Because things are going to get hard. Things are going to get challenging. You need that passion. So passion, passion, passion. The second thing is, if you want to get a distinction in mathematics in high school, not in high school, sorry, in university, you need to really spend time understanding the course. By understanding the course, I don't even, we're not yet into the learning. We're not yet talking about learning, how you learn and stuff like that. But just understanding the course, the structure of the course. A lot of students don't understand, okay, what's the structure of this course? By structure, we mean things like, how is this course structured? What are the chapters? Which are the most arcing, you know, chapters? Which are the foundational chapters? What is the core? Because if you understand that, and every course has that, every course, it has the core or the foundation. You know, this is where everything in the course is rooted in that. You need to know that, and you need to understand that. I was telling my students in my class, um, I'm I'm also lecturing a first-year class, um, calculus, not calculus, I mean algebra. Like, for example, if you want to, in calculus, first year, the most important thing is differentiation. Everything is linking to that. Well, depending on different universities and stuff like that. But where I work, like differentiation is like the core. If you do integration, for instance, you need to understand differentiation before for you to be able to do integration. That's why in most cases when you're doing calculus, in first year you start with limits. Because if you understand limits, you understand functions, and then from there you can now understand you know, differentiation from first principles, and then thereafter you understand the other laws of differentiation, which are actually derived from the first principle, by the way. And you, you see, it makes things easier. So please focus on the foundation. Understand what is the foundation. If you miss that part, you know. So students who tend to do well, they do that unconsciously. Some of them consciously, but they would ask questions. Okay, how is this course structured? What are the assessments you're going to have in this course? You know, you need to know what assessments you're going to have. Guys, you can't say you want to get a distinction and you don't know even how the assessments are split. Because if you want to get a distinction, usually the way, the way I advise students, and this is for any course, is that if you want to get a distinction in a course, then every assessment becomes important. You need to create a strategy around assessments. If you're going to be having an assignment, you need to know how much that, that assignment, because the distinction actually will be your year mark. Distinction is not like the, 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 the mark you get in the test. We're talking about distinction in the course, meaning your final year mark must be a distinction. In other words, 75% above. And what happens with that is that that mark will come from everything you have done during the year. So that assignment is important. That tutorial test is important. That quiz is important. So it means that you need to start taking everything serious. 
all the assessments are equal. You need to treat all assessments as equal. In fact, students who actually end up getting distinctions in many courses is that they treat every course like they would, they have this mentality, man, of, of approaching a course as if they are writing an exam. Like when they study, they study with aggression. They study with, like, they become hardcore when they study. They don't just study like, ah, you know. Have you realized that when you are studying for the exam or a test, you become so aggressive, you become, you put much effort. So students who actually do well in varsity, they, they, they don't have a thing of, like, you know, belittling courses. They put all the courses at an equal pedestal because that should be the morale, you know, and stuff like that. So even with assignments, assessments as well, approach every assign, assignment like you need it, like you're going to die if you don't pass this. So a lot of these things about distinctions, guys, is about attitude, is about we can give you the best advice and say do this and this but the most important thing is attitude you know recently in class i actually asked the students i asked them to say is there anyone here who think that they're not going to get a distinction they must raise their hands and they did they're like me i think i'm not going to get a distinction i was like guess what you're not going to get it because you've already created an attitude that you're not going to get it. You've already created a belief system that you're not going to get it. There is something called the law of attraction. And I actually believe in it now. I never used to believe in these things. I thought they were just like like some weird theories. And that's the thing they didn't work. But they work. In fact, that's how faith works. Faith is about believing in something. But what you're actually doing is that you're actually creating and emitting an energy or a vibration that actually is at the same pedestal as that thing you're thinking about. That's why you'd have, you know, people would be asking themselves, why do I keep on attracting the same things in my life? Why, keep, why do I keep on having the same things? It's because you think about these things. You, that's why even they say that the friends that you keep, the things that you do, the things that you watch, they actually get to your mind and they create that reality. So you see, like, the other thing is this, is the attitude towards the course. And I know, like, in most universities, there are certain phrases that are thrown around, you know, phrases like course chows, you know, and you're going to be here for years and not for four years, for years, you know, <laughs> You know, then people then start to have this mentality that, you know, mathematics is hard or cause is hard and everything like that. Look, if you have that mentality, there is no way that you can do any good because that is going to be a barrier. That is going to be something that actually blocks you from actually doing well in the course because you've already told yourself that this course is hard and stuff like that. And that is the... The common phrase with mathematics, if you go anywhere, you hear people talking about mathematics, you know, I mean, each time I introduce myself, like, hey, I have a PhD in mathematics, people look at me and frown, like, ooh, mathematics? So you must be smart, you see? So I think that it has gotten into a lot of students' mind, and they look at math as a monster, and it sort of becomes... Um, a blockade or it sort of blocks them from achieving very well because they don't see themselves as people who can really achieve very well in the course because they've already tempted this to be a monster. So the other thing would be change your mental approach or your mental view around maths or any course to start off with and then you're going to attract that reality. I don't want to get into those things, but I was just saying that please understand the structure of your course understand the core of your course, and also spend time just understanding the terminology, the notation. Because every course is a language. And before you can understand any language, understand the basics. You know, what is the terminology that is used in this course? Understand the terms and stuff like that, the notation and stuff like that. But the most important thing is to understand, like, what is the core and the foundation of the course and also 
further to understand what is the importance of this course? Like, why am I doing this course? Because our brains learn better or they grasp better when we conceptualize things. So if you understand the, the concept, you understand, you know, why am I doing this? Why is this important? And where will this be applicable? It just becomes better. That's why when you watch a movie, they don't just start with like, poof, they're shooting each other. They start like creating the setting, creating the story. So the moment they start shooting each other, you already understand who's who, why are they shooting each other, et cetera, et cetera. So the same thing with studying and the same thing with, with course is that you need to build up that, and then that is the thing that you need to do by yourself as a student. Unfortunately, maybe as lecturers, we don't dwell much on that. You have to like, conceptualize it for yourself. Why am I learning this? Where will this be applicable? What does the application look like? Especially in maths. In maths, which brings me to the learning method now, the way you learn maths, maths is a problem-solving subject. People say that. But actually, what you realize is that as you go along with maths, maths becomes problem-solving, but you have other things that comes into the skill set. It becomes an analyzing things like logic, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because it gets abstract as you go along. So you then need to, to really conceptualize it. Like, oh, what is this? Why am I doing this? And how does the application of this look like? And then the other thing is, especially if, you, if it gets too abstract, the way I think is best to go about learning maths, because that's where now the, the important part is, how do you learn it? How do you learn the subject? So, um, in varsity, in mathematics, I think for you to do well in maths, you need to spend time really understanding the concepts, the theory. Because if you can understand that, trust me, the examples are going to look very scary. They're going to look very difficult. And that's what students tend to do. They tend to want to understand the theory from doing examples. But if you approach it that way, it doesn't give you depth understanding, but it actually just makes you to understand that example and how does the theory fit to that example. But if we give you a different example, then it becomes a problem. So I would say that for you to get really to understand maths, like spend time on understanding like the theory itself. Like if we say we're differentiating. What do we really mean when we say that this is a function? What does that mean? You know, when you continue with maths, those things become important because you're conceptualizing these things. So one thing that I used to do as a student was, you know, I would, I would do a topic and thereafter... Um, like do the topic and study the topic and thereafter I will close the book and I will actually write down the topic. I mean, write down the notes, the way I conceptualize it, the way I understand it. Because that made me to understand the concept better and it was just working for me. And the other thing that I used to do is that I would find something, like I would learn a topic and then I would be like, okay, um, how can I apply this into real life? Then I would start making my own examples on real life stuff, on how can I actually apply this. Um, I remember doing polar graphs on polar coordinates. And I remember after that, I was staying at Nokendo, a res at Verts. I remember going into the garden and all I was seeing is polar graphs in the garden because polar graphs have flowers. You can have flowers or petals. You can have butterflies. Ah, guys, it's is beautiful. Oh, listen to that. You can have butterflies. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? But that's the point. The point is that you need to create, and that's where the study method becomes important. 
you need to create a very effective study method for yourself. And everyone can create a different study method. But I think for men, you need to create something that will make you to understand the concepts and the, like, the theory, like understand the theory. And thereafter, from there, do the examples, do the tutorials, and then after that, apply yourself in the applications. Like, how can this apply? And if possible, make your own examples as well along the way. One thing that worked for me, maybe this is the reason I'm a lecturer today, for me is that I can't learn anything unless I teach it. Like, I can't. Like, for me to learn something, I have to teach it. So I used to teach people when I was an undergrad, in undergrad. And I also used to teach myself. Like, I would, I would be by myself and I would have, like, a book and... And I'll just write, I'll be teaching myself, like I'll I pretend like I'm a, I'm a teacher and, and doing this to myself. So that is what has helped for me. But, but my, my point here is that, you know, with maths, take time to understand the theory and thereafter look at the examples, you know, and thereafter, you know, apply that. And another caveat is this especially for those who are doing, I mean, in most cases, like first-year maths in most universities, it is still relatable. It is still something that still relates to high school. It is still a bit more technical. Um, it is still more formula-based, you know, which is what people are used to mathematics as. The moment when you tell people that you're doing mathematics, they just think that you can... You know, you can add numbers. They think of mathematics from an arithmetic point of view, which is the, like the little part of mathematics. And sometimes that is not even the, the, the pure mathematics of it. You get what I'm saying? It's just the tip of the iceberg, the arithmetic part, like counting numbers and stuff like that. Um, so when you continue with mathematics, especially when you go into second year, of mathematics, and it gets to be abstract. And I'm talking here about pure mathematics because also there is a distinction between applied mathematics and pure mathematics. So if you do pure mathematics, when you go into second year, it goes actually very abstract. Um, even applied maths, to some extent, it becomes very abstract because, you know, I've also done applied maths. So now... These are the important things that I think, you know, one should follow in that case because a lot of the times the questions that I get from students, especially when they get into second year, the mess becomes so abstract that they just can't get it. It's like it goes back to the thing that I was talking about, about conceptualization. They just can't conceptualize it. Like, what are we doing? You know, because it's no longer like your normal solve for X. Now it becomes very abstract, like things like analysis you know, topology, group theory, etc. they become very abstract. So then how do you approach them? You know, I mean, even in first year, you, you do have some abstractness um, because, you know, depending on the university you are in, um, if you do first year, at some point, maybe you do some proofs, you do some theorems and some proofs. And the proofs becomes more, um, they become more when you actually go into second year maths, third year maths, even at honors level, postgrad, etc. So then how do you approach it when it starts to guess like that? So here's the thing, you know, um, you, you, it goes back to the point that I was saying that you need to immerse yourself firstly in the theory, which is also a bit difficult sometimes, but that's where the conceptualization comes in. But usually my advice for students who are doing abstract maths or when the maths gets abstract, that is you have proofs and theorems. What I always say is this, is that firstly, spend more time just understanding the definitions, right? Spend more time understanding the definitions because when you're proving, you can prove from first principle. So when we say that you're proving from first principle, we just mean that you're just using usually the basic definition to prove something, right? Um, 
So you need to understand the definitions, you know, and you need to understand the terminology. Like I said, you need to understand the symbols that are used. This one, this one is a big one because every cause is a language. So you need to understand how the language is spoken, the terms, the phrases, the symbols. Now, math is a symbol course or is a symbol subject like everything is symbols like so if one doesn't really understand the symbols that can be their way to not doing well in the course so understand the symbols understand the general idea of the course what is this course all about i think at this point i'm being repetitive if i am i apologize but it just means that this is quite important so have a general idea of what is this course all about? What are we trying to do? And for that, I think you can use your lecturers um, and ask them to say, hey, guys, what are we doing here, actually? What is, is exactly this? And then once you have done with the definitions and you understand the definitions quite better, like understand the theory as well, which is part of the definitions, then I think because then in most cases you have to prove um, a theorem, a lemma, etc. For those who are doing maths, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, that is those that, are, those that are doing maths at a higher level, maybe from second year upwards. Even in first year, you have to prove. You need to know different ways of proving. And I think that's where the whole things of proving becomes a problematic because the only way to prove, I mean, the only way to understand how to prove in mathematics is that one, you need to understand the, the course, the subject at hand. Like I said, the terminology, the symbols, etc. And thereafter, you need to understand ways of proving. So what do you mean by that? So for example, the most common way, I mean, the most common way of proving that a lot of people know, especially at first year level, is proof by induction, which only works um, when you turn to prove, you know, mathematical statement or mathematical statements that um, include or are about natural numbers, right? So mathematical induction, but there are other ways of proving. You can prove by contradiction, right? We can prove um, there are things like negation, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to understand the different ways of proving. If we say we're proving by contradiction, what do we exactly mean? You know, and now other courses as well have, um, or each course have a way of proving or ways of proving or methods of proving. Like if you're doing analysis, those of you who have done analysis, you know that, you know, we love using epsilons and deltas a lot. You need to, also immerse yourself in that. Once you understand those dynamics, I think then, you know, it, it, it makes it better, you know, and also just understanding the difference between a theorem, a lemma, a corollary, an axiom, a proposition, et cetera, et cetera. If you understand those terms and understand the terminology, like what do we mean when we say something is commutative, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to get into this, but you get what I mean, right? So please do that. The other important thing in mathematics and for people who do well in mathematics, and if you want to get a distinction in mathematics, you need to have this ability that I'm going to say now. And this is the ability to link different concepts together. Because mathematics, as you go along, in fact, when you go into master's, PhD, etc., you just realize that actually it's just one thing. Like calculus, algebra, you know, number theory, topology, like they just, there is some way where they just intersect where they link. But what I'm saying is this, is that you need to understand in that maths course that you're doing, you need to understand how each topic linked to each other and then how different concepts link to each other. Because when you get tested, the ultimate test in mathematics we are testing you if you can link these things together. We're going to give you a problem maybe, depending on the cause, or maybe we're going to give you... For example, um, for those of you who are going to be doing differentiation, 
there are many ways to differentiate, right? We have the power rule. I mean, we have the power rule, yes. We have the product rule, the caution rule, etc., etc. But then in the exam, you definitely find a question, one question, that maybe for this question, for you to do this question, maybe you have to perform many mathematical tools or you have to apply many concepts on this question. Maybe for you to differentiate this function, you have to firstly split it into partial fractions. Maybe this is even a trigonometric I mean, function. After splitting into partial fractions, maybe you have to use some trick identities to simplify it. And after that, maybe you then have to then apply the power rule first for you to differentiate. And maybe after applying the power rule, you have to apply the quotient rule because this is a quotient. You see what is happening there? You, you are actually having a problem that tests you or that actually where you actually apply many concepts on just one problem or on one um, question. So your ability to be able to link up all of these things together is actually what works is actually what will make you to strive in mathematics. You don't study things in isolation. If you study this concept, you finish, you master it. After that, you study the second concept, you master it. But ultimately, ask yourself, how do these two concepts connect? Is there a connection? Etc., etc. If you do that, you'll be able to attack and approach and understand all the concepts not all the concepts, but especially the application part. Because the ultimate test in mathematics is going to be you applying yourself. Understanding the theory and not doing anything about it. It's like if we teach you how to drive a car and we give you the theory and be like, this is a gear, this is a steering wheel, this is a clutch. The ultimate test will be you being on the road and driving. So that's what mathematics is also. Learn the theory conceptualize it, understand it, and then have to apply yourself and see if you can actually be able to, 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 to work very well. The other bonus thing that I can say here is, and this applies to every course, right? You need to know your course inside out, man. Students don't take time to ask questions, to ask people who have done the course, to ask their lecturers about the course. And I think that is very much important. Because what that does, it, it gives you a perspective of the cause. You, you don't need to go to a cause without knowing what is the problematic subject in the cause, which, which chapter is challenging. And this is not to discourage you. And this is not to say that you must listen to people who are probably going to tell you negative things about like, yeah, this cause chows in China. This cause will chow you. No. It's about you understanding what you're getting yourself into. Like, guys, doing a course is like going to war. Literally. It's like going to war. When you go to war, you need to understand your strength, number one, and you need to understand your weaknesses. So students don't spend much time really assessing themselves to be like, when coming to meds, what are my strengths and what, what are my weaknesses? Because you can work on those things. For example, myself, I... Even to this day, I, I, I really struggle with arithmetic. Like arithmetic as in like adding numbers, like whenever you have to add things up, like that stuff just, I end up doing a lot of mistakes. Uh, for those of you who have done matrices, matrices like is, is a bit arithmetic if you look into it. And when I was still a student, I used to struggle a lot with that. You know, like adding, I, I knew that I was going to make a mistake because there's a lot of arithmetic etc etc and you know uh, that's my weakness but i worked on it you need to work on it you need to find okay how can i this is my weakness how can i work on it so what i'm saying is that go into a cause fully aware like self-awareness is important when coming to cause as it is in life you need to uh, understand okay i'm doing this cause what are my strengths what are my weaknesses you started there and you try to address those things up. And thereafter, what you do is that you need to also understand the terrain of the course. Like in every course, there are weak concepts. 
by week i mean that there are concepts which are very easy like chapters which are very easy topics which are very easy and then there are concepts which are very difficult so you need to get that to gather that information because it will help in your strategy how you put everything together how you strategize um for that cause and then you know you shouldn't get into a cause and already you 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 get to a chapter and it's difficult and it's, it's by surprise at least you should have asked a lot of people they should have told you that no be careful of this chapter be like every course guys has that every course has that problematic chapter that everyone knows the lectures even know that this chapter is challenging is difficult so you need to know that in advance so that you are able to plan in advance the easy concepts you deal with them quickly like pa 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 and there after you actually go into the the so called difficult ones because the, those ones will require you to spend more time you know on them to actually get them and 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 how to approach them etc i'll think about other things because i don't think that's everything that i wanted to say maybe we'll have a part two on this but in the meantime let's make sure that we get a distinction in mathematics see you on the next one shap shap